Hi, Eva Nichols here. So, I have a huge color mess here, don't I? I wanted to talk to you uh, today about uh, a new palette that I'm be, um, in the process of setting up and I wanted to share my thought process with you. First, uh, you might want to check out my previous video where I did a new color wheel based on the Sim colors, which is from the printing industry. So, you know, the when we put colors in our printer, we don't put a red, blue and yellow in like we do when we think about primary colors for our watercolors uh, in our palettes. Uh, there we have cyan, which is like a turquoise blue. We have yellow and then we have magenta instead of red. So I try to do a color wheel using that theory for another way of thinking of color and watercolor. So I used Peacock Blue from Holbein. I used uh, Quinacridone Magenta. This happens to be from Winsor Newton. And then Nickel Azo Yellow from M. Graham. But it could be Transparent Yellow or Nickel Azo Yellow from one of the other brands. That doesn't matter. So I used those three colors as my primary colors. And you can see I got a very beautiful color wheel. The only color that was maybe a little disappointing was actually the green gold, the color that is mixed between a nickel azo yellow and then the peacock blue. And I just wanted to talk about that for just a second. Nickel azo yellow is pigment PY150, so it's a single pigment color, or, and the magenta, quinacridone magenta, is a PR122, so it's also a single pigment color. However, my peacock blue from Holbein consists of PG7 and PB15, so it's a, there's two pigments to make up the peacock blue. And I am thinking that is probably why this particular color where, where it's with the yellow, it, it's a little bit more muted because you can see the other greens are perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. And uh, the purples are also great. Now, the, the um, oranges are a little subdued compared to if I do it with a regular color wheel where I use uh, red, blue, and yellow. Uh, you can see the, the oranges are a little bit brighter, but it's very, very minimal. And that was expected because, you know, there is, you know, magenta is a purpley pinkish red, right? So, and purple and yellow, they are uh, complementary colors and they will, will um, subdue each other. They'll uh, uh, neutralize each other. Uh, so I thought I'd do another color wheel. And the only color that I would exchange, instead of using the peacock blue, I switched to phthalo blue green shade. This one happens to be from uh, Daniel Smith. And that is pigment number P. B15 colon 3 so it's a single pigment blue and you can see that that fixed the quote unquote problem with that green gold green you know uh, yellowish green there see how much brighter that is so it does sometimes matter if a pigment is a single pigment color or a multi pigment color it's not something you have to uh, spend a lot of time on worrying about but it does show up sometimes when you're doing mixes of color then sometimes it can throw you off if it's a, a dual pigment color. Then you don't always know 100% how it's going to react. Doesn't mean that they are less good colors or anything like that. It's just something to know and keep in mind that that can throw you off a little bit. Anyway, here is a new palette where I started it out with those uh, three colors. Nickel, Azo, Yellow, and I happen to choose, to choose the one from M. Graham. It doesn't matter. It's PY150. And then I have my Quinacridone Magenta. Again, doesn't matter what brand. And this happens to be Winsor Newton. And then here is my Peacock Blue. And that one is specifically from Holbein. And that is the one that's a dual pigment color. So you might, if you don't have that color, and you might decide you'd rather have the Thalo Blue Green shade if you have that one. And you can see they're very, very close. But the Peacock is probably a tad brighter. And it's not quite as, it won't go quite as dark. And I actually worried about that because I wasn't sure if it was going to be able to create a real dark black color mixed with the two other primary colors, the quinacridone magenta and the nickel azo yellow. But actually you can see here and here's the one with the peacock and here's the one with the thalo and you can see there is no problem there. Either combination will go to black. So it all depends on what, what you want to do. But I'm going to stick with what I had originally started out with. First of all, because I don't really want to change it and I, I love, I have peacock blue on my regular um, red, blue, yellow palettes. So, um, so I'd like to uh, have that on this palette too. So we're going to call this my summer palette. And so after I have seen 
seen what the colors look like from just the three primary colors. These are all the colors I could mix. And of course you could mix infinite colors in between. But anyway, it gives me a good kind of uh, indication of what colors I can mix. And you can see here's the neutrals that I got um, because you know, I have the complementary color pairs. And if you want to see more about color wheels, I have several videos and I'll have them up here in the corner uh, if you can uh, watch those later. And I'll also have links underneath. And I also will have links if you scroll to um, show more and you scroll down, then you can see all the different supplies that I have used and there'll be links uh, to them. And uh, I uh, am in the affiliate program of Amazon. So if you buy through my links, I, I think I get a little percentage. I'm brand spanking new to this. So I don't really know exactly how much that's gonna do, but I know it doesn't cost you any extra. So, so I wanted to t uh, show you and tell you what colors I have added on to this 12 color palette. And I'm gonna fill up. I broke down and I bought a, a few new palettes of my favorite. That's the Travel Palette from Jane E. Jones. I just love this palette because it's just the right size, I find. It's big enough for my studio work and it's not so big that it's a big pain to travel with. Uh, it has a lid, it has four areas, so I can use that if I wanted to use it uh, for extra mixing. And then it has the 12 wells here and then it has uh, these five, 10 areas out here. You could use them for putting uh, extra colors in but I like to have keep that keep them so that I can use them for mixing and then you have this nice big area for mixing in here and I like the wells that they're round uh, they don't really damage my brushes so much and they're nice and you know big enough for a little bit bigger brushes you can see that's not a problem and then because they're rounded there's not like the corners and edges I feel that it doesn't damage my brushes so much anyway and that's why I don't really like the little half pants and those kinds of I, I think they're very rough on the brush and I don't paint with little tiny brushes most of the time. So I'm gonna fill this palette up and I already started my color guide. I always do a color guide. I have another video on that and I'll link it up here uh, in the corner and then also down below so you can find that if you wanna see how exactly I set that up and what my thought process is behind it. But anyway, I had already started it with the three primary colors that I'm, you know, from the CYMK color theory or color selection or whatever. I don't know what you call that, but it's how, how the printing industry sets it up and so um, I, and I left spaces that corresponds here with my palette in between so I can fill it in with the correct colors so that's what I'm going to do and here are the three colors again in my swatches from my swatch book peacock blue nickel azo yellow and the quinacridone magenta and so let me tell you what colors that I have settled on as far as adding to my palette here so here's my uh, nickel azo yellow which looks like this I decided I would add on a new gam so that's a very warm yellow and it lifts pretty well actually and it's PY 153 you can see the nickel azure yellow does not lift all that well so that's going to be and so I put them I like to put my colors in in the order of the color wheel so from yellow towards red and then from red towards blue and then blue towards uh, the yellow again so that's you know since it's a warmer yellow than that one it's closer to the red that's how I think of it and then the next color I'm going to put in is a burnt sienna from Winter Newton it's PR 101 I like to to have an earth tone because you know it makes such uh, an easy job of creating neutrals so it's I, I don't like to not have an earth tone and burnt sienna from winter newton is the one i'm used to working with and i like it very much and then i have for my red you know because you know i had the que uh, quinacridone magenta but you know that is you know a very blue red very cool red so i wanted to have um, a warmer red and so i have decided that quinacridone call from daniel smith pr 209 is the red that I will consider my true red in my palette and then uh, the next color I'm going to put in is the opera from Holbein and in a video about a year ago I think it is I um, I did a light fastness test on the opera uh, opera and opera rose colors from different brands that I have and the Holbein by far held up the best and I know that opera is a fugitive color but I love it so much and I don't feel that the change is so dramatic that it's going to be huge problems
problem if a hundred years from now it has faded. That's just my view on it and you can have your own view on it, but I just love it. Anyway, and then of course we have the magenta and then the next color I'm going to put in on uh, towards the blue side is I'm going to have French ultramarine blue, which is a very warm blue. And then I was really, really debating. I could have put a purple in, but you know what? When I can create these gorgeous purples just with a peacock and then now I, I am adding on French ultramarine blue and a couple of other blues. I mean, I really didn't feel that there was any need to put a purple in because I have plenty of easy ways of creating very brilliant and bright purples. So that's why I decided to go straight to the French ultramarine blue. And then I'm adding on in Dantran blue, which I, I don't normally use a whole lot. And this one happens to be from Winter Newton. It's PP60. And uh, the French ultramarine blue is PP29, if you're interested in that. And by the way, all the colors that I've added on so far, they've all been single pigment, except for upper rose. Upper rose is a dual pigment BV, which I don't even know what that means, BV10, because normally it's P, but BV10 and then PR122, PR122 is actually the same pigment as quinacridone magenta. So they have added this, whatever it is that makes it look like um, almost, uh, I don't know, ir iridescent or not iridescent, but like super bright. Uh, so um, so anyway, so in dantran blue, so you can see here, it's leaning more towards the uh, true blue. It does not have the greenish tint that uh, in my other palettes, I usually have Antwerp blue in, or you can also use Prussian blue. But since I have the peacock, I don't, you know, if I put some peacock in here, I bet you anything, it's going to be pretty darn close to Antwerp blue. Anyway, and we get, can check that out at some other in some other video. Okay, so that was the Indantron blue. And then, of course, I cannot live without cobalt blue. That's just me. So that's PB28. That's a really a standard color, you know, it's like one of the good old standbys. And then I have, again, it's a color I have a very hard time living without, and that's Indigo from Winter Newton. And Indigo is a, it has three pigments in it. It's PBK6, so that's pigment black 6, PV19, which is pigment violet 19, and PB15, which is pigment blue 15. And pigment 15 is actually a phthalo blue. So it's a, a three pigments in there, but I love, 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 and I love the indigo from Winter Newton. If you check the indigos from other brands, they have different combinations of pigments. So they are not the same, even though they're all called indigo and they also look very different. I think I've talked about that in another video. Uh, so I'm not going to go into depth on that. Uh, so that's going to be on the other side of the peacock blue. Is it? Yes, it is. And then finally, another color that I chose that I think will be really fun is going to be the cobalt teal from M. Graham. There's several cobalt teals and teal or green teal and teal from different brands but I looked at the ones I had and I really like this one the best and that's a single pigment it's PB28 so it's the same pigment as cobalt blue this is just called cobalt tea so a teal so you know some of the colors like the tea the the cobalt they can have different shades and it's I don't know how they do that but it's you know probably something to do with the treatment or whatever I have no idea so I thought that would be a really really versatile very nice complete summer palette. So I'm going to squeeze in all the colors and I'm going to finish my my little uh, uh, chart here that I always put on top of my palette so that I know exactly what colors I have in my palettes and um, then we can just uh, wrap it up and I'll do uh, a little bit more explaining and talking when I have had a chance to do that. But you know since I've already demoed how to do this in, a, in, a, in an earlier video I'm not going to do that that again. It's not that interesting. But I'm really excited about these colors. It's going to be fun to paint with. Alrighty, I finished painting my color guide and now I'm just going to uh, put it on the lid of my palette. So I'm going to use packing tape, clear packing tape to uh, tape it down so I don't lose any of the color that I put on here. And you can see I painted over a black solid line, with the, you know, that I put down first with a permanent marker. And then when I've painted in all my color swatches in the order, that I have them here in my palette. I um, put tape down on either side and uh, lift, try to lift out. And I try to be as consistent as possible so um, I can see how staining or non-staining my colors are. So you, and I put actually this time I put an S on the staining ones, but you know, you can just see it visually. My staining colors are the nickel or yellow. It's very, very staining. I could, I mean, that's all I could lift out. And then a quinacridone coal is staining and the quinacridone magenta is staining and the endantrin blue is staining and so is the 
peacock blue and the indigo and the other colors lift up pretty well. I mean, rarely will you be able to get back to complete pure white, but you can lift up a lot so it's easy to uh, put in highlights or lift out highlights later. Anyway, I think I'll be happy with this palette. I'm going to take it with me for my next little trip out to see my daughter and then I'm going to be using this palette. And I thought just before I wrap this video up, and if you have any questions, you know, please uh, uh, post them below. And also if there's something in particular you'd like me to show you, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd just do a little wet into wet on these little pieces of watercolor paper. These happen to be uh, 300 pound um, cold pressed and I make their two and a half by three and a half and I put white masking tape around the edges that's half an inch wide and they make uh, adorable little miniatures which I then frame and sell in the galleries that I'm in. So, uh, so these are, you know, always turn out really cute. So anyway, let's just um, try out a couple of the colors I happen to have here. So this is the Indentrian Blue. Let's put a little bit of turquoise in and we can put a little bit of uh, Jenna down here and it does just uh, sit for a little bit. This is how I paint these here. I have a lot of fun with those there. And we'll let these colors just mix and mingle a little bit. Let's take out extra water just so it doesn't bloom back. All right, and um, let's grab another one. Let's try and put some of the uh, ball on here. Let's put some of the uh, poplar rose on and then we can put some of the teal, cobalt teal down here and see what that'll do. Maybe I should put a little bit of yellow in too. Why not right there? See if I can let that kind of run like this. That. So you can see these are fun to paint, super fun to paint. So let's run some of that water off here. And you know how it is with watercolor, it dries a lot lighter than what it looks like right when you put it on. So it'll make nice backgrounds. You can paint any kind of a little landscape on top of these kinds of paintings. And it's just so I can show you that these colors, they really get along very well. This one is not as wet as the others because it's dried in the meantime. Let's do some of the teal here and then let's do some of that new gamma bows down here. Look at that beautiful spring color we got there. And let's put a little bit of the opera rose in here. It's nice it's kind of springy colors. And do the same thing. You know, they're going to run together a little bit and make some nice fun color transitions. Is that. And uh, let's grab one of our little liner brushes. I'm going to try this one out again, which I, I bought it at, at Rosemary's. I've never tried this brush before, and you know, so it's kind of like a liner brush but it has like shorter hair so it's, it will hold a lot of pigment but I haven't really found the right way of using it yet I'll, I'll have to experiment with it a little bit more so far I haven't been all that impressed to be honest with you with this particular brush but you know very likely operator error so let's go in and while this is still wet slash, slash damp and um, dab around and see if we can uh, make something that could look like some evergreens and let's just roll it in these colors so that it's loaded up. See, that's where I'm surprised with this brush is that, you know, it seems like it runs out so quickly and I would think that it will hold on to a lot more water than uh, a regular rigger brush and I don't know, it doesn't really seem to be doing that. So, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's not about this brush right now. I'm just having fun and see how easily you can, you know, build yourself a little landscape by just putting some shapes in like that. And let's put a little bit more subdued back here and just kind of connect these shapes that a little bit behind here and I'm gonna have to take another brush that behaves a little bit more like they want it to so we have red so let's put a little bit of this in make a dark color and um, let's put a little bit more dark here and I think it would be fun if I put in what about some little yellow dots here and there and we need to make these look a little bit more like trees there there's that and swipe the bottom here I'm gonna let that sit for just a moment but see how fun that is let's see I think I want it like that and then the next one use my dagger brush here I'm just gonna go for kind of a bluish purpley color and then I'm gonna dab it so that it's not too wet and then I'm going to just go in here mm -hmm. It's a little too dry and put that across like that and then I'm just gonna go in and some distant some fuzzy mountain shapes there and then we'll let it dry but anyway you can see I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this palette one more thing I wanted to do on this one just to show you this is one of those things I do all the time with these little guys is I grab my credit card I think I and mean, you need to let the color sink in a little bit before you do this and then I try to scrape out a foreground it's still a little damp 
time, but I can still get some rock shapes in. See, then you have a foreground, and then I usually wait until it's completely dry, and then I can put a couple more defined trees in in the foreground, and then these here that are fuzzy, they, they'll form a nice background. Anyway, enough about that. I have other videos here. I'll, I'll uh, link it for you where I show you how I paint these little miniatures. They're so much fun. So I can zoom in a little bit. So you can see. See, that's the beginning of a landscape. And then here, my mountains are very fuzzy back there. You can barely see them. I can probably, they don't look, it looks like you could barely see them in the, in the uh, camera, but they'll, they'll do fine for uh, background mountains. And then I'll put in a foreground here and then that can be the lake. I paint a lot of lake scenes because I live here at Lake Tahoe. So anyway, that's my new uh, C-R-Y-M-K palette, which I'm going to use this summer in addition to the one, I, you know, my regular palette that's based on red, blue, and yellow, more traditional. But I think I'll have really, really good, good colors that I can mix from these here. So I'm looking forward to that. So um, let me uh, know in the comments below what you think about trying to build a palette around the colors you have in your printer. And I'll see you soon in another video. Make sure you have fun with your watercolors and be creative and stay safe. And I'll see you soon. Happy painting.